God, Jesus. we know your word. Thank you, he's able. Jesus. Now come on, lift your voice if you know he's able. If you know he's capable, come on, let your body magnify his name tonight. We give you glory. Yeah. We know your word tonight, God. We trust your word. Let's raise it up again, everybody. Say, he's able. He's able. He's able. We trust you, Jesus. We know you're able. I've tried him. And I know it. Say, he's able. Oh, don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. Everybody say, hey, don't. don't give up on God. Hallelujah. He won't give up Thank on you, Jesus. You. Let's sing it together. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. He'll never. He won't give yeah. up on you. Yeah. One more time. Don't give up on God. Don't give oh. up on God. He'll never. He won't give now come on, shout it. He's you. able. If you know he's able, put those hands together and bless him tonight. If you know him to be capable, if he's never failed you, if you know him to be faithful, lift up your voice and magnify his name tonight. Hallelujah. With our hands lifted, Lord, we proclaim you now. In your mighty power and your awesome majesty. So, Father, we ask you tonight to release your power. Let your presence fill this room tonight, Father. As we stand in your presence, as we stand in your house, we lift our hands tonight and we worship you. We glorify your name tonight, God, because you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor. We declare you as our king and as our Lord. We give your name the glory and honor tonight. Come on, let's sing it. Sing it. We love you tonight. We proclaim you, your mighty power. And your mighty power. And your awesome majesty. And your, awesome your awesome majesty. majesty. Father, we lift our hands. Lord, come upon us now. Lord, yes, Lord. Come upon us now. And release your power. And release your release power. Your power. And let your let your presence fall tonight, God. Let your presence fall. Father, we love you tonight. We lift up our voices and we proclaim you now. Come on, sing it. Lord, we proclaim you now. Sing. Lord, we proclaim you now. And your mighty power. And your mighty yes, Lord. Power. And your awesome majesty. And your your majesty, so Lord, come upon us now, Lord, oh God, come upon us, us now. now, and release your power, and release yes, Lord. Your power. Father, we ask that you will let your presence fill this room tonight, as we lift up our hands and as we lift up our voices, we magnify and give your name the praise, hallelujah. You are our King and you are our Lord. So, Father, we open up our mouths and we cry unto you tonight. Come on, lift your voice and say, Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Father, we want you to be glorified tonight. Father, we praise you tonight. Lift your voice and sing it to him. Say, Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. We give you glory. Come on, ask him. Release your power. Say, your presence fill this room tonight father as we stand in your presence father we lift our hands tonight we open up our mouths and we declare your glory in this room so father with one voice we open our mouths and sing it to you tonight everybody lift your voice and say oh lord, oh, lord. Oh, lord. hallelujah oh, lord. raise your voice tonight everybody sing oh lord Release your power, say, release your, your power, God. Release your anointing in this room. Release your glory in this room tonight. Release your power tonight, God. We need your presence like never before, God. We need your glory.
glory like never before. Everybody raise your voices in the room. Father, we bless you tonight. We say, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we summon your presence tonight. Hallelujah. We lift our voices and cry. your presence fall. Let your presence fill the room tonight. Let your presence fall. Release your power. Your. Let your presence fill the room tonight, God. Let your presence fall tonight. Oh, oh, oh. Release your power. Oh. One more time and let your presence fall. Let your presence fill this room tonight, Father. Let your presence fall. Your presence fall. Release your power. Oh, and let your your presence fall. Fill the room tonight, God. Fill the room tonight, God. To fall. We want you tonight, let your presence fall. We need your glory tonight, Jesus. Come on, somebody lift your voice and ask him tonight. Ask him to fall in this room. Sing fall. We need you, Jesus. Come on, everybody, raise your voices tonight. Everybody sing, sing fall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We want your glory tonight, God. Let your glory fill the room tonight, God. Yeah, let your power fill the room tonight, God. Let your glory fill the room tonight, Father. Father, we want nothing more but for you to have your way, sovereign God. So we lift our voices tonight and bless you. We lift our voices tonight and bless your name. We give you all of the glory. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Continue to worship him, saints. We thank you and we give you glory, honor, and praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will not prolong the service any longer. But I don't know about you, but I enjoy the praise and worship team. Because in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. There's peace. Ah, I don't know about you. There's victory. Something, you know, something's got to change when, whenever you come into the presence of God. So God, I thank you for your presence on tonight. I glorify you and I give you glory, honor, and praise. And without any... Uh, further ado, I would like to introduce the speaker on this evening. It is an honor and it is a privilege to introduce someone that has been in my life for over 25 years. And the person you see on the microphone tonight is the same person you, uh, I see at home. When she is praying here, that's the same voice and that's the same power that I hear and feel at the house. She is not here practicing on us. This is something that she labored for. This is an anointing that she fought for. She went through hell for to get. And I thank God that she is here with us and I thank God for having her in my life to help me grow spiritually. So none other than my wife, the anointed one, the anointed vessel, my rib. She looks good to be my rib, right? You can't tell, she, you know, the Lord, who, I don't know which side, but one of those sides. <laughs> but I thank God for her missionary evangelist, Tamara Dennis. Come on and give God some praise. I said, give God some praise. If that was for me, that would be all right. But I said, give God some praise. He's worthy on tonight. 
we welcome you into this place. Holy God, wonderful Savior, your King of Kings and your Lord of Lords. And God, we tell you, thank you for another chance. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your hand touch of mercy. God, we honor you on tonight. Come on and pick those hands together one more time and give God some praise. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shay. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We bless you on tonight. We honor the Lord. And while you're yet standing, we give praise unto our leader, the set man of this house, the angel of this flock. Come on. Bishop Stenothy Powell Sr. in his absence. And to our first lady, the midwife herself. Give it up for First Lady Powell. To all the elders, to all the evangelists, deacons, deaconess, choir members, praise and worship, sound people, we honor you all on tonight. Come on, put your hands together and bless the name of the Lord. And that last but not least, to my husband, Elder Dennis, the one who keeps me blushing when I leave home. He's my lover, he's my best friend, and I thank God because he's anointed too. And so I honor him on tonight, and to my children, Michaela and Kalia, my baby girl, and my sunny boy. First Samuel 30, we're gonna be real quick, I pray. 30, First Samuel, 30th chapter. And the word of the Lord reads, And it came to pass, when David and his men were come to Ziglag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag, and smitten Ziglag and burnt it with fire, and had taken the women captive that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burnt with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice, and they wept until they had no power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinoam the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself and the Lord his God. I'll go ahead and read seven. And David said to Abathur, the priest, a lax son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abathur brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt overtake them, and without fail recover all. And David was greatly distressed. For the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself and the Lord his God. You may have your seats. I just want to talk to you this evening and just encourage you to dig for the deep. Just dig for the deep and dig for the good. Dig for the good. Have you ever had times in your life where you felt lost or times where you were faced with life's tragedy, where you had to deal with life's ups and downs? I read in Psalms 34 and 9 says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God, the Lord, delivers him out of them all. Have you ever been there where you had a zigzag moment? where it seemed like everything was lost and everyone dear to you were gone. This is where David finds himself here in this text. David and his men came to Ziglag on the third day, the Bible says, that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag and smitten Ziglag and burnt it with fire. Verse 2 says, and had taken the women captive that were therein, they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. 
One of the things I realized in this text is that it could have been worse off than what it was. Uh, here, David comes back from battle to find that all the women and children were taken away, uh, but there was no trace of death there. Uh, and verse 3, it says that when they returned, the city was burnt with fire. Had the Philistines in chapter 29 not rejected David and his men and sent them on their way, it would have been months and months later until he returned and the situation would have been far worse. There comes a time where you have to assess the situation. You have to look at your situation. Look what could have been had it not been for God's grace and his mercy. When you realize that it is not as bad as it looks. When you were in that car accident and you flipped over five times and the car totaled and, and you got a ride in the ambulance instead of a hearse. Then you begin to remember all the times when the Lord delivered you out of that bad spot before. I don't know about you, but that was my personal testimony where I flipped over five times on I-95 going south to Miami to a cousin's wedding, but the Lord spared my whole family, not a scratch. We went to the to the hospital and they were looking for the victims. They were looking for those that died in the accident, but we survived. You begin to remember all the times when the Lord delivered you out of that bad situation in times past. And then you come to the conclusion that if he did it before, he's well able to do it for you now. Praise and worship says he's able, he's well able. He didn't deliver me before just to let me perish now. You got to remind yourself and encourage yourself. You have to get to the point where you tell the devil that I know the Lord didn't bring me here to leave me to die. Verse 4 says, then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and they wept until they had no more power to weep. David's two wives were taken captives in verse 5, Hebanon and the Jezreelites and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. We get to the A clause of verse 6 and it says, And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for their daughters. This means that they were with David, they began to lament and even thought about stoning him. Isn't that something, isn't it funny that how one day you can be on top and the next day you can be so low, you can be on the bottom. Please don't think it's strange when people switch up on you because they are, one day they did it to Jesus and one verse they were singing, Hosanna, Hosanna, and the next verse they were saying, crucify him. And many times in the body of Christ, we are so busy fighting each other that we confuse each other with the enemy. Look at your neighbor one time and say, I'm going, I'm not going to fight you, but I will save my energy and fight the real enemy. Let me say this, when the enemy comes into the camp, it's not the opportunity to go against the pastor as they did. But this is the time we should rally together and begin to intercede for him and the ministry and how we must counterattack the enemy. That is how we are many times in our lives when we are approached with distressful situations. We begin to act like these men did. The Bible said that they cried until they had no power to cry. These were men of war, but instead of gathering together to come up with a plan of action, they start crying crying like most of us we start crying lord why me lord my bills are not paid lord why me my kids are acting crazy and we go into a pity party a, a woe is me party and maybe I'm not talking about any of you but maybe I'm just talking about myself perhaps what you've been through is justifiable it was worth crying it caused you to cry I, I know I've had times when I've cried like these men uh, till I didn't have any more power to cry 
God knows I've been like them. Uh, and 2022 has come and it has brought me to place a place of distress uh, that caused me to cry until I had no power left. Uh, my new saying is you don't know until you know. When I lost my father, you don't know. I've eulogized many people, but you don't know until you know. Uh, a place where I just wanted to give up and walk away from it all, but I, I heard the Holy Spirit say that even in this, I'm going to preserve you. Preserve. Preserve means to protect it from being damaged or destroyed. So I've come tonight to encourage you on tonight. Even in the midst of what you are in right now, God is going to preserve you. And then I realized that if I wanted things to change that I couldn't stay in that position of lament. I couldn't wait on the ones that I thought would be there or would come to my rescue. I had to do what David did, and I had to encourage myself. The Bible, the Bible says, I know this is Bible study, I'm sorry. The Bible says David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. And in this season, you have to be intentional about your comeback and your breakthrough. Uh, he intentionally looked beyond what he was faced with when he got back to Ziglag. Uh, he intentionally rejected the spirit of gloom and doom of his men. Uh, you've got to strengthen yourself. Uh, strengthening yourself in the Lord is an intentional act. It is not something that just happens. Uh, when it says David strengthened himself, uh, the Hebrew verb implies persistent and continuous effort. Uh, I know that David probably wanted to give up, but he was intentional about his deliverance. Uh, he was intentional about his comeback, uh, and he begins to talk to himself. Uh, and sometimes we have to be like the psalmist David when he said in Psalms 43, Why hast thou cast thou, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. God, David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. David knew God in a personal way. He was the man after God's own heart. God was just not God was not just the God of David's country, though he lived in the coveted nation of Israel. God was not just the God of David's father, though he was raised in a God-fearing home. God was David's personal God. David had enjoyed personal fellowship with God as he watched his father's sheep out in the fields as a boy. David had composed and sang many psalms, such as Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, which showed that he knew the Lord at his personal shepherd who cared for his very soul and very need. You do not know God if you don't know him personally. You can know about God, but you may not know him if you just know about him. You can use a lot of religious jargon. You can come to church service after church so service. You can pray with elegant prayers, but not know God personally. We come to know God in a personal way through personal faith in his son. The Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins. Look at your neighbor again and say, neighbor, I know a lot of people that have been through some of the same things I've been through. But the difference is they didn't make it and I'm still here. That's a place to give God some praise. He kept me. Oh, he kept me. I stopped by tonight to tell you to hold on. Help is on the way. Andre Crouch penned it best when he said, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. I've learned to depend upon his word. And if you're not dead, I'll come to tell you that God is not done. It is the thing that hurts you the worst that prepares you for the God's greatest. But whatever your fight is on tonight... You must come to the conclusion that you're coming out of this with a testimony. I made up in my mind that I'm coming out like David did, and I shall recover all. When a person is having surgery, one of the most common questions that come up and that is asked, they ask, how long will the recovery take? 
The answers sometimes become complex and almost always unique because it depends on the individual and the type of procedure that took place. But David did a few things in this time of recovery that we should take note of. One, David was repentive. The way to look, the way back to the Lord is always, it's always involves acknowledging that I was wrong. Trusting from the wrong and doing what God wants. Turning away from the wrong thing and doing what God wants. The other thing David was, David was submissive. 30 and 8 says, shall I pursue these guys stole all of our stuff, all of our families, all of our possessions. The main thing was to go back and do it to them, go back into their camp. But David said, wait a minute, I got to talk to my God. God, shall I pursue? He deliberately stopped to ask the Lord if he should pursue and to, to, to recover what they had taken. The next thing happens, David was trusting God told David that he would recover everything, and David took God at his word. He believed God, and he acted upon that belief and pursuing this man and fighting to take back what had been lost. Faith is taking God at his word. God answers him and say, pursue, for you shall recover all. You shall overtake them, and without fail, you will recover all. God first gives David something to do. He pursues. Then God gives David a promise in the doing. He says, you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. And when God gives us something to do, he also gives us a promise in the doing. God tells him, not only will you overtake your enemy, but you will recover not some of the things, but all the things you lost. Joel says it like this, I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dwelt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed." As I was preparing for this lesson on tonight, I heard three words. We getting ready to go. Three words, preserve, recover, and commencement. The word commencement is actually derived from a 13th century French word meaning beginning or start. You see, commencement isn't the celebration of an ending. It's the celebration of a new beginning. And as students, we see when you come commence, you actually begin a new chapter in your life. And the Lord told me to tell you those that are here and those that are watching by uh, Facebook and YouTube that these three words will be yours. He's going to preserve you. He's going to cause you to recover the things that you lost. We're standing. We're standing. And commencement. Be get, get ready for the new beginning. Get ready for the new beginning. As we lift our hands and we begin to tell God, thank you. Oh, God, we love you on tonight, God. I speak this prophetic word over your people as you gave it to me, God. Hey, many of you have lost some things. And you thought it was all lost. You thought you would never recover the thing that you lost. Hey, she. But God says this is the season of preservation. He's going to preserve. He's going to cause you to recover. And there's going to be a commencement. The season of celebration. The season of new beginnings. Come on, open your mouths and begin to give God some praise. Come on. Come on. I got a few more moments left. Come on, worship the God of your salvation. The God that woke you up this morning. Uh, the God that brought you here without accident or incident. Uh, the God that woke you up this morning in your right mind. Shata, I break and destroy uh, the spirit of give up. The spirit that will cause you to want to throw in the towel. I break it tonight. I break depression. Shata, I break stress now. Shata, I bind up the stroke that will come because of the stress. Uh, that you would take, I bind it up tonight. I curse sickness in 
your body tonight. This is going to be a season of rejoicing. Ashe. Hallelujah. Come on, open up your mouth. Open up your mouth and give God some praise. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. We thank you, Lord, for doing it again, God. We thank you for doing it again. Yes, cry out to God tonight. I see new homes and new cars. You've been waiting. Some of you have been faithful. And you've asked the Lord, when is it my turn? The season of commencement is here. Of new beginnings. And like David, we shall recover all. We shall recover all. All is not lost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Lord, we love you tonight, we're nothing without you, God, we can do nothing without you, we need you tonight, God, we need you as the earth needs water, we need you as bodies need blood, God, we need you, shed us so revive us again, Thank you, Lord God. I want to speak to the person that got that bad doctor's report. You're here. I speak to your bloodstream if you don't move. I speak to your bloodstream now. Purify it with your blood, God. I command healing now. I command the body to line up with his word by his stripes. We're already healed. It's already a done deal. I speak to high blood pressure and even low blood pressure. I command regulation. And even though people died in your family of it, you shall not die. You shall live and do the works of the Lord. I cancel heart disease tonight. Shere aso, rondo ribi aso. Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah. Shere aso, hallelujah. Come on and put those hands together and give God some praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Continue to give God some praise on tonight. Dig for the good. Come on, come on. I don't know about you, but I thank God for the word on this evening. I don't know about you, but I thank God for the word on this evening. You have to understand that I know the speaker personally. And the word did not just come by happenstance, but we've been through some stuff. And the Lord begins to speak to the Dennis household and say, dig for the good. Stop looking at the bad and thank God for the good things that are happening in your life. And immediately, as soon as we change the way we see things, as soon as we change the way we observe things, God begins to move. Uh, promotions started coming. Money started flowing. Love started flowing. Miracles started flowing. Dig for the good. You may not have a, a physical shovel, but how do you dig? You dig with worship. You dig with your praise. And when things get bad, you say, God, even in the midst of it, I trust you. Even in the midst of it, I thank you. And I know I will have the victory in you. I know, oh God, you will give me the breakthrough that I need. And because of the things he has done in the Dennis household, I believe God for the other promises that he has made me that I am still waiting for it to come to pass. Come on to give the speaker another hand. Pr clap hallelujah hallelujah while we are yet uh, standing let's give God a glory for our bishop our first lady even in their absence they left us in capable hands uh, it's time for the offering um, on this evening we are asking for if everyone can give a $20 love offering We have many ways to give electronically 
or you can see one of the ushers uh, for, an, for an envelope. And even though we are asking for that small amount, I challenge you, if you can give a little bit more, there's something Elder Y used to say, give a little more and expect much more. And I promise you, God will bless you. And I'm not saying it because this is a church jargon. I'm saying it because I know personally that there were times where Bishop would ask for a certain amount and I would give just a little bit more, not because I had it, but because I wanted to have it. That might go over somebody's head. I gave it not because I had it, but because I wanted to have it. So my wife and I, we will make the sacrifice. And I know when God is moving, because God will begin to speak to both of us, even though we were not talking to each other. We would give each other a look, and we both immediately knew. Thumbs up, yes. Go ahead and write it. And on our way home, unexpected checks, unexpected miracles will begin to take place. You cannot be God-given. So if you have your uh, envelope on this evening, please uh, bring forth. You can go ahead and come forth, follow the leading of the ushers. But if you give via app, give LaFi, Cash App, we say thank you. This church is good ground, good soil. One thing I have learned being a member here at Abundant Life, don't ever miss an opportunity to give to God, even if it's just for a dollar. Whatever you have, I challenge you to give the best that you have. And I guarantee you, God will give you back his best. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you and we bless you for everyone that has given on tonight. We pray that you will multiply it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here are our announcements for this evening. ALC, we celebrate our 32nd church anniversary this Sunday, May 22nd. Come on. Come on. I know some pastors that even last a week. <laughs> On this Sunday, May 22nd, during both morning worship services, with guest speaker Bishop Dexter Coleman, the colors for the day are shades of pink and silver. Each member is asked to, show, to sow a $150 seed for the occasion. You can pick up your commitment cards for our for your pledge from one of the ushers. You may also start giving through any of our electronic platforms. Please note, please note the occasion in the memo, if applicable. Don't forget that we will be celebrating our leaders' birthdays as well if you would like to give an additional love gift. Join Pastor T. Rena Glenn for our night in his presence service host, hosted at ALC, uh, which has been rescheduled for next Tuesday, May 24th at 7.30 for a night of divine impartation. Bishop Stenneth E. Powell Sr. will be the guest speaker for Bishop Silver in the Freedom Assembly Conference Thursday, May 26th at 7 p.m. at Freedom Temple Church in Raleigh, North Carolina. The choir and congregation are asked to please support our leader on this, on this ministry assignment. Happy birthday to our leaders, our walking miracle, Bishop Stennis E. Powell, May 18th. The fragrance of this house, Lady Beverly Powell, May 23rd. Remember those dates and celebrate our leaders and send them some love offering uh, via Cash App, Give the Fire, whichever way the Lord leads you. Let's continue to pray for those on our prayer list, Sister Asia and Sister Alexis, passing of grandmother.
Elder MC Powell, health. But I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord. Jeremiah 30, 17. All right, it is, it's time to go. But I don't know about you. I don't want to leave here without telling God thank you just one last time. So if you can stand on your feet. I know it's Tuesday night. But whenever you're in the presence of a worshiper, every moment is a moment of worship. Every day is a day of worship. Let's... Friends, we're thankful for you, for your prayers and financial support. If you've enjoyed this message and have a prayer request, you can text or write us at Abundant Life Cathedral, Church of God in Christ, 4400 Old Pool Road, Raleigh, North Carolina. Also, if you would like to make a contribution, there are several giving platforms on the screen that you can use. Until this time next week, God bless.